Hi everyone, uh, welcome to the first episode of Free the Mind for the People podcast. My name is Marina Rivera and I'm a first year sociology master's student at the University of Central Florida. My name is Hallie Spencer and I am also a first year applied sociology master's student at the University of Central Florida. The study of sociology goes beyond just like looking at these fragmented societal institutions and interactions. We also need to look at how these different societal aspects intertwine with each other below the surface in ways that are not immediately obvious to us. So sociology can ask why and how, but most importantly, I think it should ask what does this mean moving forward? I have value in sociology and um, we are constantly feeling that we need to justify our discipline mm -hmm. before the world, before the scientists and the experts, but we are experts too. We do yeah. science too. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that we have a lot to offer if, if people were open to looking at things beyond that binary mm -hmm. black and white thinking. Free the Mind, Free the People, like the name emphasizes that this is a collective effort and that it's kind of a chain reaction. And also that knowledge is power and that's why they gatekeep it so much. <laughs> Hi everyone, welcome to our new episode of Free the Mind for the People where we are going to discuss intellectual activism. I'm Hallie Spencer. And I'm Marina Rivera. And when speaking truth to power, that means that one confronts the power structures from within. And sociologist C. Wright Mills defines the power elite as those who occupy the dominant positions within dominant institutions of dominant countries. And these institutions can include the military, the economy, politics, and education. Um, the decisions made by those in power have enormous consequences on our everyday lives and our decisions. So that's why it's important to confront those in power. But there is also the issue that the academia itself as an institution is not prioritizing sociologists who actually go out and, and speak truth to people. And I, would even say that it's because it's almost like a liability. <laughs> <laughs> it could come from us talking to our community, spending our time online talking to power, maybe change that to spending time online talking to people within our communities or people who are interested in the same topics that we're interested in. And that will ultimately build a coalition. And when we then do decide to speak to power, it, will, it won't be through the form of a tweet or something like that, it would be a form of a movement. Critical race theory was, we are providing links below to all of this. It was, it has already been attacked in 37 states. Bills have been either introduced or passed um, to ban critical race theory. So it is something that is currently under attack and that in general just includes all educators. All mm -hmm. educators, education, higher education and elementary through high school is being threatened by people in power because they are taking advantage of this division and this confusion that they've created. You said something interesting about how like when white people do research it's not considered me search and it made me think of how like whiteness is not really viewed as a race but just like a defaultness like it's mm -hmm. just a lack of a race instead of whiteness being a race and I feel like when we have scholars it's like oh this isn't a white scholar this is just a scholar then when we have a black mm -hmm. scholar, it's a black scholar. And I feel like that is like part of like the underlying viewpoint of how we view race and whiteness. I was wondering for our audience, if you could define what critical race theory is and how this theory specifically helps us understand or address our current social issues related to race and racism. Sure. Uh, and so critical race theory is just this theoretical perspective for and a practice of interrogating the role of race and racism in society perspective but even still right black president first one eight years of that eight years of uh you know democrats kind of in charge really changing things and implementing lots of these different policies and so we saw the immediate reaction to that right Donald trump <laughs> but it was yeah. the complete opposite right and so that's that's kind of what we're seeing is this the this this kind of back and forth that we i personally viewed puerto rico as a colony of the u.s to this day um and this is this is debated um, and so I wanted to explore this topic in this conversation. Um, and so that is why colonialismo means colonialism. So I want to explore and answer that question um, throughout this episode. So yeah, now we can introduce our guest. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for um, all the context to that. And with that in mind, we'd like to formally introduce today's guest, Dr. Fernando Rivera from the UCF Department of Sociology. So thank you for coming on today. 
Absolutely. Thank you for having me. Of course, we're very excited to have you on. You know, growing up, you see a lot of the, those inequalities and you want to understand them a little bit more. And I think uh, I'm, I'm a big fan of, of this issue of, you know, kind of like your biography and trying to understand the world. Uh, I don't think that I'm that special, that what happens to me only happens to me. And I want to know, you know, you know, I'm pretty sure that this happens to a lot of people and try to understand sort of those mechanisms of what uh, actually happens within society, right? Because, you know, if you think about it, we create sort of those conditions, right? Uh, yeah. And sort of understanding what happens, how we treat each other. And and obviously humans are very complicated mm -hmm. and, it, it, and it's fascinating, right? Uh, yes. And it, and it seems, you know, mm -hmm. and when you're in Puerto Rico, you think that San Juan is the center of the universe, is the you know, the place to go and all those type of things. So you don't have kind of like that global uh, type of perspective that I think sometimes people underlook when you're in the continental United States, you know, think about all the, all the interactions that you can have with people from all over the world. And I think, in, in, you know, some of the things, you know, when you don't have a, 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 a context of reference, everything starts to be normalized in a way that perhaps is not healthy. We'll tune in for our next episode, which is about intellectual activism and speaking truth to power versus speaking truth to people and how we can use that ability to make the most social changes possible. Um, so please join us for the next one. Bye. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Bye, Everyone, thank you. Bye. See ya next time. <laughs> yeah.